What up, fresh men? It's your doctor slash pledge master, Dr. Brody Cody Brody. That's right, doctor of shredding. Don't mind if I brew. And speaking of brews, I got a new v -v 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 vaccine. That's right. You've heard of Pfizer, you've heard of Moderna, but what about uh, Dr. Brody Cody's Brody, Brody Brew, huh? It has a combination of, you know, your standard natural ingredients, such as Bang Energy, Monster Energy, Bubble Tape, and the last words of uh, a little thing called Infinite Jest, DF Double U. Rest in peace, uh, uh, uh. Get it going good, bye. From a bunker in beautiful Parkchester, the Bronx, it's electoral dysfunction. Now, here's your host, Tom Brennan. Hey everyone, welcome back to Electoral Dysfunction, the show where comedians and experts debate the news of the week from the safety of their quarantine. I'm your host, Tom Brennan. Thank you to Ned Thorne, our announcer. Uh, and welcome to Electoral Dysfunction's What a Fucking Year Spectacular, where we look back on a fucking year. Uh, but before we get to that, we have some breaking news, yes, out of Washington, D.C., uh, where our own correspondent, Amanda Nicastro, is on the scene uh, as stimulus negotiations enter. Um, oh, uh, all right. Uh, anyone who's just listening to this, what we are seeing here is not a footage of the Capitol building, but it uh, appears to be Amanda Nicastro. Amanda, uh, can you hear me? She appears to be unconscious in a tasteful two-bedroom apartment somewhere, uh, gripping some, some, some liquor, and I think those are Christmas cookies. Hey, Amanda. What? Hey. What? Hey, it's Tom from Electoral Dysfunction. You're supposed to be on the scene at the Capitol building for stimulus talks. What? What, Tom? Hmm. Whoa. Those cookies Whoa. look delicious. Mom. <laughs> Where's today? Where's today? Uh, this is, it's the weekend after Christmas. You're supposed to be <laughs> at the Capitol building. Uh, well, supposed to be where? You're supposed to be at the Capitol building, not drinking. Is that, ca that's, that's, oh, that's the captain. Enjoy that. <laughs> wait, wait. This is a 2020 year? I mean, 2021? It's, is it still 2020? It's still, it is, it is still 2020, Amanda. Uh, Tom, Tom, can you do me a favor? Okay. Sure. Call me when it's 2021, okay? Okay. <laughs> Happy, oh, wow, she's just going for it. There you have it. Uh, I guess we have no updates on the stimulus talks, although, uh, in a way, uh, a drunken wreck going back to sleep is uh, about as good of a metaphor for Congress as we got right now. Uh, we're going to get to our panel in just a second, but before we do, I'm going to check in with our old pal, the depressed chef himself, James Heskey. Ned Thorne, star wipe us to the depressed chef. Turns out the only thing worse than having Christmas dinner with your family is having Christmas dinner by yourself. James Heskey is... The Depressed Chef. For this recipe, I'm going to need a couple good steaks. These are fillets, but you can use almost anything. Whole peppercorns, salt, olive oil, and then either a mortar and pestle or something super heavy. And there's supposed to be butter here, but I am a moron who ruined Christmas. Now I'm going to crush those peppercorns with my cast iron pan. And if I do this right, I'll relive some childhood trauma. I trusted you! Now I'm going to steep them in warm olive oil for about six or seven minutes. This takes some of the intensity out of them and makes them more bearable. So the peppercorns are like my emotions, and the oil is like Xanax. Next, I'm rubbing down the steaks with a bunch of coarse salt and some olive oil, and then my drained peppercorns, which are still hot. I'm making a nice crust all the way around, 
like it's going to stick, but it's just going to fall apart like everything else in my life always does. I'm cooking this in my peppercorn crusher here using my favorite method to make almost any steak. A little oil in the pan, sear it on either side, then add butter and start basting. Because the only person I hate more than myself is my cardiologist. After six or seven minutes, don't be too proud to use a meat thermometer to check to see, oh my god, I just overcooked $30 worth of filet. After it rests and you cry, serve next to your bacon garlic Brussels sprouts. Oh no. Are you going to make me teach you those two? Come on, it's Christmas. Fine. I'll release that episode now too. Let's go. And welcome back to Electoral Dysfunctions. What a fucking year. Spectacular. I'm still your host, Tom Brennan, and join me in welcoming this week's panel. First up, always excited uh, to, to talk to this woman. She is, uh, uh, you can catch her regularly with The Magnet, uh, Magnet Theater, uh, and our old pal, Ann Herberger's back. Hey, Ann, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Happy New Year, everybody. 2021's got to be better than 2020. Let's, 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 let's knock on wood on that, because who knows how bad it could get. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. I'm really glad to be back on the end of the year show. Thank you for having what me. What if this is the good old days, Tom? Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> I was thinking that literally <laughs> just that. the other day. <laughs> I was like, I'm what getting if, to my what grade. If, what if we look back on this as the, like, remember back when the pandemic was bad, but like there were moments where we could joke about it on Twitter and right. now we're all living <laughs> below ground. Uh, right, yeah. That's the thing. And I the year fear. before that was just, is Star Wars going to be good? 2019? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keep going. Star Wars was like the really big deal. Yeah. Uh, introducing him now uh, because he already introduced himself. I jumped the queue, uh, sorry. Quite all right. The host <laughs> of The Political Orphanage, uh, himself, Andrew Heaton, back. Hey, Heaton, how are you, my friend? Hello. Uh, I, you know what? On, on, a, on a COVID scale, uh, on, on a 2020 scale, I'm like a seven. Uh, hey. You know, give it, give it how bad things could be. I'm doing pretty well. Honestly, I'd on like a regular 2019 good. scale, I'm a three. Yeah. But, yeah. but you know, right now I'm fine. Uh, where are you? Are you down in the great state of Oklahoma right now? I, I am. I'm, I'm back in, in the homeland uh, and am, am planning to move here in the next uh, month. Wow. Um, I, I got a grant with Tulsa Remote to to work out of Tulsa for a year, and so she'll be doing that. Great. And uh, have, have embarked with my family for Christmas. Congratulations! Hey, Thank and you. I what I like about that is I think the first time you were on during the quarantine, like you were actively on the show, bemoaning like how like you moved to LA for career stuff, and then the career uh -huh. and the industry shut down. So it's like you, right. you just had a good happy closing arc to this year. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> I mean, ups and granted, there was. There was a long, uh, expensive, sexless, prolonged period of, of <laughs> sure. heat and trying to jump around and navigate the, the, right. the pandemic, but at least it concluded with me going, screw y'all, I'll do my own thing and I'll do it remote and I'll right. have a cheaper cost of living as I pull it off. That's a great title for your memoir, by the way. A long, expensive, <laughs> sexless period of time. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, that's, That'll be volume one. Uh, very excited to have this person back with us. She is the, the co-host of DTF, the Daryl and Timory Fun Hour, and you can catch her New Year's Eve uh, spectacular online. Tickets are on sale now. Uh, New Year's Eve with Honey Tree and Flirt. Dr. Timory Schmidt is back. Hey, doctor, how are you? Hello. I am pandemic okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Who among us? <laughs> You know, uh, I, I get regular exercise and I am in within walking distance of a liquor store. So it sort of all works out. Yeah. There you go. <clears throat> I got to say. Do, uh, do, do you all have friends that are enjoying this? Because I know one or two people that are like, you know, 2020 has been great. And I'm like, check under their house for corpses. Those people are psychos. Right. They're yeah. probably <laughs> serial killers. Anybody that's having a really good 2020 is suspicious. I don't I care mean, for the year, but sorry, go ahead, Jimmy. There, I mean, there definitely are upsides there are a lot of people that i have not had to see <laughs> right i am very okay with that uh i don't have to make uh i, I don't have to commute anywhere <laughs> i don't have to uh wear i mean not that i was wearing pants before but now it's just right. i'm in workout clothes until i'm in mm -hmm. like the fashion of a cat suit um mm -hmm. you know same there's here. that yeah uh, I, uh, I was thinking about this on Christmas day, how like, I would not want to do every year a stay at home Christmas, but 
I really enjoyed it this year. <laughs> I was like, right. after the anxiety of this year in general, I was like knowing that the stress of traveling for the holidays was gone. I was like, this is kind of great. I'm just eating cheese and watching movies with my wife. This is the best. This is what I think yeah. that was the emotional feeling of what I wanted Christmas to always feel like <laughs> happened this year on Christmas. And speaking of the emotional feeling of what I always wanted Christmas to feel like, <laughs> columnist for Bloomberg Opinion, Robert George is here. Hey, Robert, how are you? <laughs> Uh, I'm doing, um, I'm doing a pandemic okay. I'm a P-OK, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and in, in, um, in, in contrast, you talk about, you know, last arcs and uh, of uh, and things like that. Uh, I, uh, in contrast to what a lot of people had to go through, uh, in, um, in, in 2020, I, you know, I did, I did all right, you know. Yeah. I ended up with I, I ended up with, ended up with a new job, which has been kind of which has been rather rather interesting. And uh, I'm I'm very I'm very thankful that we've been able to uh, continue uh, electless function in in this. Uh, in uh, I, I'm not thankful that we can't do it and we can't do it in person, but I am thankful that we managed to um, keep I managed to keep it going. And um, I think I. I I like to think that we've um, made a, some kind of an impact on some of the the, the number of folks that um, the two tune, tune into us uh, uh, each week, and so um, so that of course uh, is um, uh, is testimony to our great to our great leader, which we don't have a we don't have an opportunity to t tell Tom how uh, how much we uh, how much we appreciate him continuing to do this. I prefer and, the title and, and, "Great and Glorious shut, shut Leader." Up, Tom. Please, Tom shut, <laughs> Tom, shut up. Listen to your elders for a second, and just and just back. Asking yeah. some of the praise. There's some we mentioned this a little bit at the end of each show every now and then, but I'm glad we're doing it actually at the at, at the um, at the top because um, uh, I think uh, 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 um, doing this was uh, therapeutic um, for myself and I think other uh, uh, for uh, for other people. Uh, it gave a little bit of a, a little bit of continuity and kind of a through line to all the insanity that was going on so um i think we've been i think we've been grateful to, grateful to that and um and okay so now you can start going on with your own self-effacing well, self no i was gonna say one of my new year's resolutions is to get better at accepting compliments uh <laughs> and Good thing. Not the yeah new yet i am going to painfully just say thank you robert and move on i, I mean I, I guess i i remain a firm nice. neutral on tom i don't dislike him i'm not really overwhelmed <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess, and let yeah, me tell you right, something, man. the that's honesty, <laughs> the honesty there is what helps, Andrew, <laughs> like that I know you haven't changed. Right. Uh, well, it's because I called your life yeah. long, expensive, and sexless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, we kind of went through this after 9-11, whether or not, Whether or know, not people like Tom, yeah. We, yeah, that too. But, <laughs> but whether or not, you know, when was it okay, when is it okay to laugh again? When is it okay? to find you know the good things and and things that are very very bad and I, I one of the things i'm grateful for is just sort of finding the absurdity in a lot of what's been happening this year whether it be political whether it just be you know things that people have posted on twitter seeing people have meltdowns in walmart and you know target and and but but what I'm really grateful for is finding things to laugh about this year because it was very scary leaving New York and not knowing when I was going to go back and to give up my apartment and, you know, not know what the future holds. But I'm kind of okay with that too. And for me, I think that uh, I'm grateful to be, you know, a part of the show this year to laugh at a lot of things that have happened, to talk very seriously about things that are very serious this president and it'll be robert you said 24 days until we inaugurate a new one but also just to find some joy too just to in small things that you know sometimes i would overlook so and being on this you know end of the year is very joyful so i'm really happy you asked oh well, I'm, exactly. I'm glad to have you all here uh, and so let's let's quickly pivot to what's not happy and joyful, which is to say for 24 days, the president of the United States will still be Donald John Trump. Uh, and we hope it's only 24 days. That's true. Although like, hey, it could be Michael R. Pence in that time. We don't know. Um, uh, and this week, the president of the United States uh, uh, quickly, I think at the basically like at the 11th hour, um, 
did did the president of the United States sort of not quite blow up a stimulus plan, but uh, implied that he refused to sign it. If not, you know, if he doesn't, if if uh, direct payments to Americans didn't go from six hundred dollars to two thousand dollars, and with that in mind, I say let's hear the man out. He's the goddamn president of the United States. I haven't always agreed with him, but I think we need to hear what he has to say on this two thousand dollar payment per person because I think I would like it, please. Okay, really? but so go ahead, go ahead. No. I mean, I, yes, I would like my two thousand dollars back. Yes, it is our, yeah. <laughs> it is our money. I would like my money because what, what did I pay taxes for this year exactly? Right. Explain did, that to me. Did, did I just I'm <laughs> quake into a universe where you all are the Republicans and I'm the? <laughs> no, I mean, no, like I think that the whole thing has been a mess from the beginning. And if we acted like a grown up country, one that like you know, ate its vegetables and went to bed at a regular hour, we could we would have paid people to stay home right. for a month. And then nobody would have had to like lose their homes. Nobody would have to be evicted. And then how many people would still be alive? If we had acted like grownups from the jump and just paid everybody to stay home, ultimately it would have been the more moral choice. It would have been the more scientific choice. And if your primary concern, if you're a Republican, right. I guess, and the thing is the money, it would have been cheaper. Well, and countries like the Netherlands have been doing that. They have been paying their their citizens to do exactly what you're saying. So here's my question. I am not against a $2,000 stimulus check. I want us to all be able to live in any way that we can. But where was he a month ago? Where yes. was he two yes. months ago? Where was he a week ago? Because as of, tomorrow, as of Tuesday night, uh, the pandemic unemployment runs out. The uh, uh, the pandemic insurance runs out. Uh, all of these things are going to run out. We're going to go into a partial shutdown. Uh, so that means that veterans benefits don't get paid. Social Security gets locked up. All of the things that we as a country citizens need. Or, or, and to your point, Tim Marie, that that they are they paid into. Where was he? so that he can just get more airtime or he can and, 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 and yeah it's sorry i don't mean to start stuttering and i'm sorry i said your name wrong i was getting so mad in the back of my my rear lobe that i i you know i just don't understand it and he's fucking golfing at mar -a largo if it makes you all feel better i'm pretty sure the defense industry is going to be just fine like if I had to take a, a, a bet on if they're going to be okay, I, I think that Lockheed <laughs> Martin, Raytheon, out, all yeah. those very deserving corporations yeah. will pull through. Don't worry, folks at home, they're going to yeah. be okay. They're We're getting that get Tulsa grant money. Okay. They're good. Go ahead, you know, No, you're right. No, you, you, Andrew, you're right. Um, the, the, the defense, the, the defense um, industry, the defense department um, will ultimately be fine. But uh, Anne's point is, is is absolutely is absolutely correct. The um, uh, uh, unemployment, the state, the state, most of the state uh, unemployment, which is of a finite period, that basically all runs out um, uh, tonight, as right. of like as of like Saturday, as of Saturday night, the day after the Saturday, day after, the day December twenty sixth. Yeah, Saturday, sat Saturday, 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 December twenty sixth. Um, the uh, uh, the the CR the continuing resolution right. to keep the government running expires um, expires on Monday. All of these things, what they did is they they took the nine hundred the nine hundred billion um, uh, COVID relief um, package agreement, combined it um, with uh, the uh, the overall omnibus or um, uh, ominous bus as uh, some of was, some of us call it that allows the entire the entire go government uh, to uh, be funded um, through um, uh, late 2000 2021. 21. All of these things were, were were combined into one big into into one big package that the the president of the the president of the United States uh, has uh, you know decided to uh, you know have a temper tantrum temper tantrum over. He he says that oh well you know. I want to give them. I want to give them uh, two thousand uh, dollars instead of the instead of six, instead of the six the six hundred dollar payment. You, look, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna disagree with that. Yes, that should have been that. That should have been the the idea. Uh, they should have agreed to this back in you know sep um, September. And here's an interesting point. Here's an interesting point. Um, I think Anne will agree with me. The, the rest of you may agree with me on this as well. Um, 
if Donald Trump had said in September, gone to Mitch McConnell, got to Stephen Uchin, gone to Mitch McConnell, and said, "Let's go real big on right. the stimulus on this um, on this on the stimulus package. We'll give everybody two thousand dollars. We'll expand. We'll we'll expand the um, the the, unemplo the unemployment uh, stuff." Um, through the early part of uh, through the through the early part of um, next year, um, the vaccines are going to be right around the corner. Um, this is the this is going to this is smart in terms of what we're doing with COVID, and it's smart. Well, it's also going to give a boost to the to the economy. I think Donald and, Trump won re-election. Would have won re-election. And, and as I say, and Republicans would have been responsible for for sending cash to people. Uh, and the Republicans, the Republicans, given 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 what we saw with with the House numbers, the Republicans might have taken over the ha House as well. Now, yes. I personally would have. I personally did, was not um, did not like the idea. Did not like the idea of Donald Trump being re being re elect being reelected. But would it have been better in the short term in terms of the economy um, uh, for for the public and for the broader for the broader e economy? And it and it may have also ended up winning and uh, causing him to win re-election. Yeah, I mean, as a, as a as a as a short as a short trade-off, given where we are right right now. But because Donald Trump can't, his his ego is so huge that he can't even think of what is might actually be in his in his right. best political uh, political interest um, because you know uh, he gets caught up in his feelings. I mean, it's well, just like the most on brand thing ever because it, yeah, like everything that you just said, yeah, like what if he would have for one moment been a good president and that would have been great a bunch of times over right. the last four years or, or what typical, if at any point because like, he can't yeah, like, be a good politician just be a typical yeah. politician be a typical <laughs> politician and act in your own best interest when it, it occasionally um overlaps with the country's best interest that would have been this phenomenal is, this is why i was always kind of suspicious of electing pt barnum with fascist tendencies like yeah. you, you, you really want to like, and it honestly, this this is the thing that scares me about Donald Trump is is not Donald Trump running again in four years, which I right. he'll flirt with, right? The thing that scares me is what if we get a competent Donald Trump? Like, what if we right. get somebody with Donald Trump's bearings and his like weird nationalistic yet ideologically feckless authoritarianism? That that whole thing, whatever that is. What if we get that from like a, 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 an Emperor Palpatine character? As opposed to the soundtrack from Yakety Sax, Andrew, which is Andrew, what we've had for the last four years. One name, um, Josh Ho Josh Hawley of Missouri, right? Right. Josh Hawley of Missouri is the is the one Republican senator who 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 got together with Bernie Sanders to say, at minimum, we need a twelve hundred dollar uh, stimulus package. He's also the one. And they right, and like, and also I would say part, like I just want to say and but, in that process of adding that twelve hundred dollar stimulus package, they very rightly decided don't blow up the talks over here. They just introduced a right. separate bill. So and I think that. But, but and but also too, he's also the person who um, is uh, focused on the other r reason why Trump, Trump is trying to blow this up, um, the Section 230 um, part um, uh, th th that would um, uh, basically um, remove the special carve out that uh, tech companies have for, um, for allowing, uh, for, for posting user content without them being liable for, um, for libel and defamation and, 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 and so forth. So, Josh Hawley is um, is 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 nationalist. He's anti he's he's anti tech, but he also has this um, uh, he also has this um, uh, odd um, working class sensibility about him that would allow him to say, well, forget about what the Republicans are saying about the budget here. Give yeah. the public more. Give the public more money. So if he became if he became um, if he became president. That would be the, the type of um, person that you m might imagine a it could could know, be, and I, and I think that's where the Donald Trump. And I, I think, think that's where the GOP is heading as well. Is that like like if we go back to the night, like everybody watched The Simpsons growing up, or yeah, everybody's at least yeah, kind of passingly right. familiar. So right. if you go, if you think back to The Simpsons in the '90s, the Republican Party was the Country Club Party. Like right. like if, if if you were doing a cartoon of Republicans, it was Mr. Burns, a vampire, a doctor, a, and a business right. owner. Right. That was who. And like now under Trump, it's become the dive bar party. And Holly's an example of that, of like, uh, like, like this is we're 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 the we're the blue collar working class Republicans, and uh, 
um, yeah, I think that'll probably accelerate over the next few years. You'll, you'll, you'll see the, the quote unquote zombie Reagans kind of fall to the back and it'll be the new Trumpian blue collar. Like we're not really that fixated on ideology. We're more on the libs and, and uh, all that kind of stuff. And, and by the way, that, that is a message that, 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 and then this is something that Democrats have to, to seriously um, um, uh, be concerned about. That is a, that is a message that um, that that uh, spills over uh, spills over racial lines. That's why the Republicans did better better than expected. Um, and knows this in, in, in twenty sixteen and in twenty twelve, they outdid themselves in, 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 in both last but, two elections. Yeah. Well, well, but, but they, they outdid themselves just in terms of the white working class in, in two thousand sixteen two thousand twenty. But I'm talking about them now starting that's starting to leak into the working class of other ethnic right. groups other yeah. than right. other than white. Right. That's why that's why they did better than ex, that's why they did it better than expected in Flo, in in Florida. Um, and it wasn't just because of the Cubans. It's what it's better. Yeah. Why they, among, they did better among Latinos in 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 parts of in parts of Texas and even in even in some of the states where they otherwise did very very well. With Latinos like right. Arizona, 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 and so and, and, and so even New York, even New York Republicans. And, and, and here in here in, the, in, in fact, in if New York City, if New York City, if New York City were um, were, a, were a state, um, the, the the move towards Donald Trump would have been um, the best in any in, in, in the best in any state in the um, in the in the country, and and so. Uh, he didn't. He he barely uh, moved his numbers in Staten Island, which he'd already won in 2016. But his numbers increased in his numbers increased in the Bronx, um, in Brooklyn, um, Queens, and so and so and, and, and so forth. Because, as Andrew said, he has managed to get inroads into the the, the working class of groups other than just whites. Can, can I make a, a in Nicole Maliotakis, who just got elected, and I'm still reeling in my head over that one uh on staten island who beat max rose sorry i, I just wrapping paper just fell because it was so shocked she is she is what i kind of call the new republican who is mm -hmm. following absolutely andrew in the in the footsteps of everything that trump is saying was out there mimicking you know parroting everything that he was talking about you know whether it was immigration whether it was health care whether it was um you know really against the cop, defunding the cops the cop. defunding the cop uh, being against that and um and that's what scares me because you know i i had put on twitter the other night uh you know i'm having some anxiety tonight uh, to you know uh Fagsy Malone, I follow Fagsy Malone, who is now Mr. Malone, on Twitter, and you, Robert, you said back, what's going on? You know, I don't know where I fit. You know, this is a party that I worked for for almost 30 years of my life. I, you know, I'll be 59, and, and, and believed in principles of smaller government. Not that government needed to go away, but there was a way that public-private partner, you know, being, being prudential, being being pragmatic right. in terms of being able to have these small government empower the a individual. Absolutely, yeah. we pay into this system, and then we get back when we are, uh, you know, individuals of a certain age, to name a few. I don't know <laughs> what the Republican Party stands for. I mean, yeah. yes, it, it it is Trump's party. I think now for a decade, he owns it. Now, whether he will take mantleship of that. I, I was yet to be seen and what he does, but my fear is that the world, he will blow up the world, you know, not only with what's happened in Nashville, I would not be surprised, and I'm floating a conspiracy theory, I know that, if these weren't a bunch of Trumpers who were just like, you know, my guy didn't win, everything's rigged, we're just going to, you know, not only categorically, but physically blow up the, blow up the world, I mean. That, that's fascinating because at no point did I think that that had like a Trump like smell on it because they didn't kill anyone and it seemed to have gone as planned. So I was like, there's no way that they have and anything they warned to do people to leave, which like, right. like yeah, yeah, like people were able to go like he couldn't even manage to do that like in Omaha right. when he would have like a rally. So I what I interpreted Nashville as was like someone is definitely doing a heist across town right now. Um, and I will absolutely watch the movie yep. uh, when that comes out in a few yeah. Yeah. <laughs> someone just Someone just robbed the entirety of the Memphis Grizzlies organization. Or uh, sales. Are they still the Grizzlies? Yeah. Anyway, 
Um, uh, what's interesting, I want to say one quick thing. You mentioned Nicole Maliotakis, who uh, will now be the Congress uh, person representing all of Staten Island. And Wait, does, does she have Grimes Old District? Because like that's the only politician from Staten Island I knew. And she, was who, who is very it? Grimes. <laughs> So, so as you recall, about six years six years ago, I think it was. No, Grimes. that was Dan Donovan. It was it yeah. was uh, Donovan to Max Rose. Now to no, Grim, 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 but Grim, but Grim, 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 that's Grim, Grim. Thank you, Grim. Grim. Michael Grim. Michael Grim. Yes, yeah. Michael Grim. Because there was before. a great Staten Island election between the Republican who threatened to throw a guy off a balcony in Congress and the Ill it, it, like illiterate Democratic Union guy, and I was yeah, just yeah. like, yeah. What, like, wow. That was 2014. That was yeah. yeah. Michael Grim. Yeah, Councilman yes. uh, Dominic. Uh, I can't pronounce his last so, name. So, so this is a different district. This is this is all over. It's the same district. It's the same district. It is. It is. It okay. Is Get rid yeah. of that district. <laughs> yeah. I, I, That's yeah. a problem. They would love that. Uh, but what's interesting is that when Nicole Maliotakis was formerly the Republican Party's candidate for mayor in 2017, and she ran very much like away from Trump when she ran for mayor. She Correct. Ran, she highlighted the fact that I think she endorsed like Rubio or Kasich and like was like, Rubio. I don't agree with Trump on everything. He, uh, and then suddenly when she ran for Congress, you're right. Like she's now like, uh, she all but like just wore like a full on MAGA like a cat suit. Yeah, like, one running. It was, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, what's interesting, uh, I want to go back all the way back to the beginning of this conversation uh, when 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 uh, Timory and I were talking about wanting our two thousand dollars. And Andrew, you 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 called us the Republicans for calling it our money. And I found that interesting. This is not really about anything that happened this week, but the thing I find interesting about uh, uh, your conversations between left and right, and, and particularly in this new era where we've got more than a few people who might otherwise lean right who are people without a party versus a left that is that is evolving itself uh but what's always interesting to me is like the part of me that's like you know the like the the, the part of me that is my most uh libertarian for lack of a better word is actually the part of me that's like can my tax dollars fix this problem so i don't have to care about it i'm yeah. like i'm like i'm not like oh i want highways so that communities can be brought together it's i don't want all right. these people mad that they can't get from point a to point b put some cash in that subway over there so i can be left alone <laughs> That's the yeah. Thing. Well, I'll say that the, the 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 nucleus of that joke, and I I know you're not Republicans, or, or some of you might be registered Republican, but I know I know Tim Murray and, and 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 Tom aren't. So like it was yeah. you know joking all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, the, the 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 nucleus of that joke was just that I find that if if we were to take uh uh kind of how people react to taxes and put it on an extreme, uh that that progressives tend to view um, wealth as as a commonwealth phenomenon of. Uh, it is a basic human right to get X, Y, and Z. It's not your money. It's our money. We're going to mm. apportion that. And Republicans tend to go the other direction of that's my money. Um, like when I, when I get a tax refund, I'm not getting money from the government. I'm just getting my money back, et cetera, et cetera. And so, so it sounded to me like it was, and, and, and I, I find that interesting because I think there have been lots of um, kind of talking points that have jumped on both sides of the spectrum. I think yeah. everything right now is in a really big process of realignment. We've been talking a little bit about that, um, that kind of dive bar country club phenomenon happening with the, with the Republicans. I, I think there's a lot of socioeconomic stuff happening at the moment where on the flip side of the coin, I think the Democratic Party um, is kind of figuring out what it is because the Democrats were for many, many years, that was the union party. That was the labor party. Right. And and now the Democratic Party's really become the, the upper middle class managerial professional party. And, and so if you're like, I mean, and, and like the, the, the polling and, and the statistics for voting back me up on this. If you have a graduate degree, you, you voted Democrat, like like 80 percent of people with graduate degrees voted Democrat. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is not at all how politics operated in like the 80s. Uh, in the yeah. 80s or, or even the 90s andrew right. or even, yeah. even the 90s yeah and yeah no absolutely there's not like the loyalty of your your blue collar right. not white uh voters to democratic party the democratic party comes more from a place of like well they're the only one that i don't feel is actively trying to hurt me less from a or to like the local neighborhood machine rather than an like love and affection for the party but, okay, but, can but, I... but, but, but even then there's there's still a little bit of a variance because there's a tendency um I'll, I'll say like kind of the um, like the, the identity politics that are also realigning right now. Um, the, the people that are the biggest proponents of viewing um, viewing politics in terms of race and sexuality are are white people and specifically upper, upper middle class white people. So even within the Democratic Party, when you get into wokeness, political correctness, that kind of thing, it pulls much, much lower with African-Americans and with Latin uh, Latino people than it does with white people. So like you're uh, that might be part of the phenomenon that happened with Trump and inroads um, is that, you know, there's a socioeconomic realignment happening on the right. Uh, also, a lot of the rhetoric happening from the left isn't necessarily resonant with the entirety of it, but, but with sort yeah. of the people most active in it. 
It, for me, can I tell you what it was for me? And I, I, you know, I've certainly voted Democratic in local elections and, and uh, you know, even though I worked in the Republican Party and for most of my adult life, for me this time around, and it had been gradually coming since 2012 and in 2000, no, 2016, I needed to hear somebody talk about empathy. I we we have so much going on in this country. We're we are the, the one of the wealthiest countries on the entire planet, and I even in my own party I didn't hear it out of candidates. So when I did, I was like you know Elroy on the Jetsons. My you know feelers and, and antenna would go up. And it was interesting to, even though Biden had lost those first three primaries, he kept talking about empathy. And he kept and talking about life experience and his own experience as it related to, and it wasn't the normal, you know, how every candidate drops their G's when right. they're starting yeah, to run yeah. for office and it's, I'm hanging, I'm going, it's, right. it's, you know, when they've got a Harvard degree. This right. is a man right. who has lived a life and has seen everything from devastating loss to, you know, but not made probably enough money at times. And, you know, that I felt like he could relate to what this country was going through. And I also knew, I thought, well, maybe this is a guy also who can put together a team that is going to be competent. I, I'll just take anybody who, who is going to know about the office in which they've been picked, whether it's, whether it's education or interior or I, you know, e EPA maybe, you know, clean air, I'd like to breathe it. So it, that's what really swayed me this cycle. I, and I would, and even if it was Bernie Sanders, I would have voted for anybody but, but Donald Trump because I was so not only embarrassed to have worked in the party all those years and, and this is what we nominated. And again, I get it. I get how, how tribal that pri the primary system is, but that this is a man who can't utter one empathetic sentence to a country that had people dying, families are dying, you know, uh, uh, the economy is not great for most Americans. And in the greatest country in the world where you can come here and do anything, you can't come here anymore. And yeah. that's not right either. Yeah. One, of, one of the things, one, one of the things that has like, really surprised me this year in in the and Andrew, you're right. There is this interesting kind of a realignment going on in in the context of of economic issues, but um, it's also seems to be seeming to be happening uh, in the area of of, of social issues uh, as well. Uh, it, when Anne talks about when Anne talks about you know this this lack of this this lack of empathy um, and. Donald Trump obviously epitomizes that the most, but what's what really surprised me is how that really um, permeated throughout the Republican Party itself. Um, on on um, on uh, on Christmas Eve, the um, the the, uh, the spokesman for the, for Republican Governor Ron DeSantis, um, he 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 tweeted he tweeted he tweeted out. Uh, you know what? If everybody is going to be putting up a, if, if everybody's putting up a picture of uh, somebody who's, uh, if somebody's posting a picture of somebody who died of COVID, the least that they could do is post up a picture of the 99 people who are still alive um, despite COVID. And and he he's, he now like realized that he like really stepped he like really he really stepped in it. And he's deleted his account and 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 so forth. But what what is what, what is interesting now? Look, I know. <laughs> I love that. That's the, like, I don't even know how you do that. Yeah. Like you, you'd call up your friends and be like, "Hey, of the hundred people I know most likely to die from COVID, you're in it." So I'm going to go ahead and tweet yeah. a picture of you. Yeah, you know, look, but, but, say you know, what you want. So, so, let's, my let's, great let's, uncle died no, a month ago, and I went to my mom and I said, "Hey, I know he's important to you, but think of the entirety of our family that's still alive, huh? Better you, let you, it go." Thanks, Donald Trump. Let, let, let's let we let we can let, let, let's she say punched me in the Face. Let's save the guffaws and the dunking on this guy, which are completely and totally appropriate. But but the serious the serious point here is that um, you know 
whether, whether somebody was pro-life or pro-choice or whether you agreed with Republican candidates um, on, their, on, on, the, on, their, on their stance, the Republican can, Republicans at, at least um, uh, argued that um, it was important um, to, to, to that the life the life issue was important. The idea of um, uh, of, uh, of of fetuses being uh, um, being aborted for whatever reason was a consequent uh, was a consequential consequential issue and should not should not just be be ignored. Now it's more than legitimate to to, to discuss. You know the 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 um, uh, the the the, um, the 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 mother's the mother's health and things like that and and that is a debate that's a debate for another an, another time. The point here is though that um, in the context of three hundred and fifty thousand um, people dying because of a pa of, of a pandemic, the Republican Party has decided that there it's not it's not a big deal. It's not something that they that they that needs to be talked about. Um, it's only you know the, the uh, COVID. It's only one percent. It's only one percent one percent lethal. And the only ones who are like really really at, at risk are the older people. And we can just keep them keep them keep keep them protected. The 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 the, the, the Donald Trump has no empathy for those who died. And he has allowed that lack of empathy to um, spread out into um, the into, into, into the entire party, and that is and, and that's just and that's just repugnant. It's just it's it's it, how a party that can still that still pretends to be um, quote pro life, but just right. ignore ignore this elephant in the room is just mind boggling. I agree with ahead. you. I am I am glad that you have seen this massive hypocrisy because the it has gotten incredibly mean. Lately, the the lack right. of concern for other people, just like the the outright like, well, if I won't die from it, then I shouldn't con be concerned about you know your grandma or whatever. Why do I possibly have to care? But to be honest, this is how I've always viewed this party and the idea of labeling yourself as pro life when you refuse to support any policies that will keep that kid alive after that, or you know you're fine. I'm not saying anyone in individually, but like the, the party overall will then be very on board with war, will be completely fine uh, with, with death that is a result right. of like environmental poisoning that did not need to happen, will be fine with, uh, you know, any, any number of other causes of death. Well, that death we, penalty. Yeah. Yeah. The death yeah. penalty is a perfect example. And, and it's the, like, the what? I'm sorry, the what? The, the, the death the, penalty. Be oh, pro-death penalty, yeah. be pro-life and pro-death penalty. Yeah. It's a perfect example because I mean, what, what that label of pro-life has always told me is like, yeah, that, that's, I latched onto that when I was a, a young person as a Catholic too. Cause I'm like, yeah, like I'm about defending the vulnerable, but that is literally where it ends is like once that fetus is, you know, no longer this thing upon which I can project my own beliefs and the, the desire to be alive. Once I can no longer just project onto it without it responding, all of a sudden the, the, the pro-lifeness of the party was non-existent this whole time. I mean, this is the party that when I grew up uh, as a kid, like Ronald Reagan let how many people die of a pandemic then too? Because again, you know, who cares? I, I, so, I, wouldn't, I feel I like wouldn't, this is more I, of the same. I wouldn't same. quite go that far on the Reagan thing, but but again, I'm not gonna. I don't want to argue that. Oh I don't want to argue that right now. <laughs> um, I I will I will I will say though, uh, you know, Ron DeSantis is spoke. Spokesman, um, uh, how would he respond if um, if, a, if a Democrat, you know, something along the way you're arguing? Okay, so um, you know, in, instead of um, it, you know, instead on on January 21st um, when they when they have the March for Life in 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 DC, in, um, in DC, you know, instead of showing the, those pictures of, um, of, of, fe of of aborted fetuses, you know. Why don't you show the Why don't you show the photos um, of all the um, um, of, of all the babies that weren't aborted that were actually born? I mean, it, it's that type of it's that type of logical it's that type of logical um, um, uh, l l logical idiocy um, that, that, that that's that's the road that's the road that Donald Trump's Republican Party now wants to go down. I want to I want to jump off Timory's point. I think, and you, uh, I've, I've said this a, a million times. I know I don't need to repeat it, but I like to repeat. It. Like Robert and Anne, like I know how much this, like the good of what this party does mean uh, has done means to you, and I, I appreciate and respect that, and always appreciate your point of view on the show. But I think there's a good question to be asked. I think um, 
a lot of us on the left can get frustrated by what we see like is this sort of like then tr feeling and i'm not saying you, you two are doing this but i think this is a thing that happens a lot is this sort of like the republican party was fine and then trump came along kind of feeling and i think like you know this is a party there are people who who came to political consciousness who might not love the democratic party and like i'm, I'm one ready. of them uh but who came to that like seeing a democratic party that like made some bad choices and some good choices and they can be like all right that's a, what a political party like sometimes it'll make decisions i don't like and i'll protest against it and sometimes it'll do things i like and i'll support it and then on the other side saw a republican party where you know a month into barack obama being president the leader of the republicans in the senate said my job is to make sure this person is a right. one-term president which is not the job of right. the senate leader like that is not the do, job do you mind, do you, sorry, yep correct but the job of the senate leader you know do, do, do you mind is, 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 well, is actually, that, that, is, that is actually quite i mean tom i have to push back on you i would that, all right that, go ahead that that is quite often that is quite often the job of the senate of the senate leader you no, can it's go not. You, you, i disagree let me go back to I will no, talk to no top Tom All let right. me finish let, let go me, ahead I'll let you point. finish the point that you said in the middle of my point go ahead yeah. I didn't interrupt no I, I said go I, ahead I, go no, ahead go ahead Tom go ahead make your point Good All right, right I'll make a point that's a very far cry from Lyndon Johnson who was the Senate Majority Leader when Dwight Eisenhower was president said my job is to figure out how to make sure his agenda satisfies our moral ide ideals and benefits the people of this country he probably included a lot more curse words and descriptions of his penis while doing it, mm. but, uh, uh, knowing Lyndon Johnson. But like, I think the the role of a Senate leader is not necessarily to end the end, you know, the the opposing party's presidency. That's the role of the party chairs. That's the role of the party infrastructure. The role of the people. In the and you can go you know, back to and, and and you can go and you can and you can go back to um, Senate leaders like um, George. Um, uh, God, uh, uh, the the uh, the senator from uh, the se the senator from the senator from Maine under um uh, under George George, George Bush. Mitchell. George Mitchell, George right? Mitchell. You, yeah. you can go to you can go you can go back you can go to you can go back to um George George Mitchell who basically um did 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 what did what Mitch McConnell did what Mitch McConnell is doing and decided he was going to he was going to shut down all of um George H W Bush's um um, um um appointees um mainly because looking towards looking towards 1990 looking towards 1992 he wanted to make George H W Bush be as vulnerable as possible um going into going into his going into his reelection is is Mitch McConnell the first one to say explicitly that, that, that he wanted to that he wants to make um his um the, the, uh, uh, the the president of the opposing party a one ter a one termer he 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 might he he might be but don't be so naive as to think that um uh, other majority leaders or uh, other uh, other uh, other house speakers haven't done exactly the same thing i'm not being naive to say that they don't believe that but i i am saying to say it out loud is to and it's the same thing like i have to say in my entire political like consciousness and yes i started paying attention to it a little bit before uh, other people like I remember very excitedly getting home uh, and watching the Anita Hill hearings uh, while friends of mine were like they interrupted Sesame Street <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, you know uh, but like I, I admit to that like I do think like I'm not naive I'm aware, I'm aware that the, I'm aware that opposition parties are out to like and it is a fair thing like politics is how we solve our disputes in a way that is not war I'm like you know the, it is preferred that you would beat a, an opposing you know an opposing power out of office by blocking a group of their bureaucratic uh, leadership selections than by launching a violent conflict. But for most of my political consciousness, I have seen a Republican party very aggressively say, I don't care if a majority of Americans elected a Democrat president and want these policies. My job is to just defeat them, not figure out a way to make the country work. And that is what I have seen. And I think that's what a lot of younger people in this country have seen, which is why like now they also saw a Democratic Party that was like, we'll get back to you on standing up to that. <laughs> and, um, Tom, I, and I think I, that I, is why there is a, a dissatisfaction when when it feels like the criticism of the current right. GOP is it's just Trump. Go ahead. Answer. No, 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 it's not just Trump. But but I, and I think to both of your points, it, you, you both no, no, no. I'm not saying that to just to be to be wishy washy. Um, I think Robert is right. The first time we heard those words uttered, you know, I, I it is my mission in life to block everything of Barack Obama was by Mitch McConnell, but but other Senate 
leaders have done it. I think in our consciousness, we just have seen Mitch McConnell in office a lot longer, and and as Senate the leader of the Senate longer than than others. Also, um, it things like that would come up when there were appointments or or certain pieces of legislation, but for the most part, up until probably. Uh, and I hate to utter these words because I know there's going to be a joke made, but George W. Bush, um, it, it it would be situational depending on what legislation was was coming before. But no, I don't think it this this issue with the Republican Party started with Donald Trump. I think it is culminated with Donald Trump. I think that we. Uh, we saw the rise of the Tea Party in 2010. I do think this is is about every 10 years we see some sort of change as we do in the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is trying to find its identity between moderates and progressives. You know, between the AOCs of the party, who actually I like very much because I I like to see where her brain goes on certain things to the to the Biden moderates or even some of the, the Democratic conservatives. There is an identity that is starting to be forged within that party too that we have not seen in a long time. And where that leads, I don't know. But but I do think that we have been coming to this point with the Republican Party of, of senators who, you know, who won't stand up for their own state, of senators in the time of Trump who won't even stand up for what I know they believe in because I've been around for almost 30 years. And to me, that's the most disappointing part, that you, you don't have to like George Herbert Walker Bush, but you knew where he stood. And you knew that this was his ideology. This was where th his administration was going to go. This is where he wanted to take the country. And again, you knew where Barack Obama stood. You, 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 there, were, there were no surprises in, in all of that. Barack Obama said for you know two solid years, I am going to revamp the healthcare system as we know it. It shouldn't have been a surprise to Republicans. He said it every day on the campaign trail. So, you know, but again, I, my, what my fear is, is I don't know where we go from here. Yeah. You know, I know where the Democratic Party is kind of headed, but I, I don't know what the ideology is of a party that believes in conspiracy theories and thinks that, you know, it was a rigged election when it so absolutely was not. Owning the, owning the libs. Owning the libs is basically yeah. the, the, the ideology of the Republican uh, on that note, if, if, I, if, if I could jump in, I, I'm not yeah, a Republican, yeah. but, but I am ethnically Republican. So I, I, was, <laughs> I was reared in that environment. So I speak the language, even though I've not been Republican since college. It's been yeah. a long time since I've support, uh, supported the Republican Party. Uh, you have um, to experiment in those college days. <laughs> well, no, I've, 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 been, I've been gone for a while now. And, and, yeah. uh, and I, be, between the Democrats and the Republicans, I prefer the Democrats at the moment. Uh, but I, I do think there's a couple of things worth doing. One is worth pointing out. There is a very big difference in, in politics between thinking thinking someone is an error versus thinking they're in sin. Uh, George H.W. Bush is a very good example of that, and I think, of uh, um, this person is wrong. I don't agree with this person, but I don't think that they are willfully evil. And I, exactly. I am I'm disturbed by the amount of that that's crept into our politics of anybody who deviates from my solution to a problem must have a malicious agenda associated with it. Right. And that said, I do think Trump has all sorts of malicious agendas set with him. Right. And, and part of the additional problem to this is that uh, we, we have become very tribalistic. We have become very invested in our group identity as defined in opposition to another group. And that's very problematic. We, when you have a healthy uh, multipolar democracy operating, the parties, much of the benefit to them is that they're able to um, highlight the blind spots of another party because we all have, I have blind spots, everybody, we all have some kind of blind spot, right? You, you want to have that process, but in order for that to work, it does need to have, um, we have this thing we're trying to accomplish and it's different. If it's just, I hate you and I want right. to stop you. Um, and I, I think we've like a lot, so much like, like the, when, when Trump got in, I was amazed just kind of all of a sudden, everybody that was a Democrat was like pro free trade and all the Republicans <laughs> were anti free trade. Right. I was like, what, the, what, like, like 20 minutes right. ago, you all hated free trade. Yeah. Like, but, but now Trump doesn't like it. And, I, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to be equivalent. All, all I'm trying to say is that um, th there's, there's a healthy way to do this. There's an unhealthy way to do it. And where possible, we should avoid trying to castigate people we disagree with as, you know, demonic as opposed to flawed. Right. And, and, and the, one, the one thing I, the one slight difference 
uh, Andrew, is that the that 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 the uh, um, the free the free trade argument um, had had won out in uh, the Democratic Party, yeah, and, and had previously and had until, the advantage for the win until <laughs> until Donald until yeah. Donald Trump <laughs> it had won out in the Republican the, the Republican Party definitely switched. Um, a whole lot more on on the free on free trade than the Democrats did um, this time yeah. this time around. So. It, would, it it turned out a lot of them never actually cared that that was just rhetoric and that yeah. you know that was just okay. Yeah, we'll say that people seem to like it when we shake this tin can. That's how and it this usually works. Go is ahead. a thing that I say every single time I'm on electoral dysfunction, and I I know why it's not going to happen. I understand why it will not be a thing, but could we just do uh, instead of first past the post voting, have ranked choice? I mean, like. Every single time I'm on here, like how many issues would we not have this problem if we didn't decide that the way we set up our elections when people hadn't really figured out how elections should work, like, uh -huh. and then right. newer countries were like, looking around are like some of this stuff we could improve we, upon. We, we, we have more than, in our country, we have more than two opinions. So we're going to design some sort of electoral system that allow, that takes that into account, that it's not a binary thought process in every single issue across the board. I'm a thousand percent with you, Timory, like, like a thousand percent ranked choice voting or, or some equivalent. There's lots of different things. It's, yes. It seems so, like so of main, all so the times stuff, yeah, that we could, stuff, oh, let, let Timory of, finish, Timory. of all the times that we could get everybody on board with that, yeah. And with getting rid of the electoral college, you know, like these really, really rudimentary things. I feel like now of all the times you could probably, everybody could be like, okay, okay, probably. Yeah, actually, you know, I know why it won't happen, but I still think that ideologically now is the time. Well, and ironically is statistically it should, because if, if you look at the actual polling, like you know, we can, in the last eight years, we can look and say there were a lot of Democrats that really early, let's go back. There were a lot of Republicans that really liked Ron Paul, but were like, I know he's going to lose. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and vote for the safe bet for George W or for Romney or whatever. Right. And then that happened. The same thing happened again with Bernie, where a lot of people were like, Oh, I love Bernie, but I just, he's not realistic. Oh, I'm going to go with Hillary. So that, that was like the parties have already internally found that phenomenon happening. And then writ large, on a national level, like, like what is it? We, we've we reached a point in 2013 where there were more people registered independent than were registered Republican or Democrat. Now, granted, most of those people are going to um, loyally vote Republican or Democrat without fail every year. Like, there's very few real independents. But at the same time, the fact that half the country is like, I lean that way, but I hate them is a huge indication that the parties are dysfunctional for the vast majority of people. They also tend to be um, far more ideological than regular apolitical humans are. Uh, they, they tend to be like f uh, far more um, internally uh, coherent and homogenous in a way that the rest of the country isn't. You can find lots of people in West Virginia who are very socially conservative, but really like the idea of Medicare for all because right. that, they're just, that's the world they live in, right? And so there, right. there are lots and lots of options of centrists, center-right people, moderates, all these different groups that are constantly being forced to choose between uh, progressive and nationalist conservative that just don't factor in. And it would be great to give everybody that option. Florida sent Ron DeSantis to the governor's mansion while also voting to allow felons to vote. Uh, right. Like these policies. And a thing that is interesting, Robert, I think, were you about to talk about Maine having ranked choice voting? Yeah. So, so, so Maine this year um, uh, instituted um, rank, rank choice voting for, uh, for statewide, for statewide elections. Um, I don't think Right now, it impacts um, on the on the presidential. I'd, I'll have to take a look. No, they, they they they. I believe they did. I believe the presidential okay. race was ranked choice for them. Okay, so uh, I have to so, that so, you know, so we'll, you know, so we'll see. And the Senate, the Senate race was. And Maine, well, as I said, was, well, the Senate race counts as a, as a as a statewide, even though it's federal, but it is state. It is yeah. state right. Uh, so, so you know, we'll um, uh, and you know, New York City is, is going to do that with the with the mayor's with the mayor's race um, next uh, ne ne next year. Uh, and Maine, of course, is also one of the two one of the two states um, that also is has figured out a way to tinker, you know, to tinker with the um, the, the electric electric electoral college so to make it, you know, a little more than just. So oh, do, do they do vote by vote as opposed to the whole thing? Yeah. The, the, so, yeah. so you. It's Maine and Nebraska. So, so, oh, yeah. Yeah, so you win this, you, you, you yeah. win the, you win the state, 
but you also, there's also an individual there's also right. the electoral yeah. uh, electoral um, um, vote that goes Make, to making it vote. actually competitive so if we were to do that in places like Texas and California you'd see a lot more people that are like oh I should vote now um, yeah because I I don't see that th th there's no there's no way really of uh, you know short short of uh, short of a, of a constitutional amendment of just Getting rid of the of the elector um, of the ele of the electoral college, but there are ways of getting around, uh, around it. Like there's the um, there's the there's the there's the state there's the state compact, which by the way is starting to get um, it, it, it's 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 small it's a small number right now, but there are there are Republicans who are interested um, in that um, in that approach as well, um, because all that all that requires explain the state compact just a little bit. So it, it 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 basically says um, that, uh, and this and th this is something that gets it gets it gets passed by state legislatures, where the the state legislature says that um, the uh, the elector, regardless of who won our particular state, um, the elect our uh, state's uh, electoral votes will be awarded to the popular vote the the popular vote winner. Now, um, right after right after two thousand, th 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 this th this idea uh, started to get traction um, within within um, within blue within blue states because of the, because of the two thousand election, and then with and then after and then going into 2000, 2012, it, it sort of fell by the it's it, it sort of it sort of fell by the, way, the fell by the wayside, and then because right now I think um, that I think that the the uh, there are maybe 15, 16 um, states that have um, um, that have signed on to that, and and almost all of them, almost all of them are are, are, blue, um, are blue states. But but now when we start seeing those those Sun Belt states um, moving in the direction um, moving in the direction of the of the Democrats, you know Arizona and jo Arizona and Georgia. Possibly Texas next time around. Uh, you, you, um, Republicans are starting to say, you know, um, we we may have an we might have a slight edge in the electoral college uh, right now, depending on how blue states, uh, the midwestern states vote, and, and so forth. But that's that's not going to be a locked in, and so maybe we need to f uh, figure out um, uh, l at least look at some other uh, alternatives to just the uh, the winner talk t the winner take all approach uh, in the electoral college. And I want to say something real quickly about like the toxicity and polarization of Congress and particularly the United States Senate. You know, Susan Collins is her own <clears throat> unique animal, but a world where ranked choice voting is how a senator gets elected could go a long way towards changing the how people in the Senate operate. Because if you're a senator and you have to rely on voters from the opposite party, like putting in a vote for you for you to win. Uh, like that can really change and, and how, you, would, how you approach the job. It would, it would fundamentally change campaigning as well, because right now American campaigning is, look, I know you're not a big fan of me, but that person's the, the antichrist and they want to kill old people. So I'm going to yeah. ask you to look deep into your heart and vote based on fear and hatred. And that's, that's yep. American politics. Well, if we have ranked choice voting, yeah. I can go and go, hey, listen, Whig party. Great. Glad to be here. I want you to vote Whig. Put Whig number one. Vote me number two. Here's why. These are the things I believe in, the things I want to do. And I am the best option after vote for your guy but after that here are the positive things that i'm trying to do because i'm not i'm not trying to convince you to not vote for somebody else i'm trying to convince you to vote for me it would, it would fundamentally change the the electoral or the well, campaign well, system. In, in, and i want to say after that in 2012 the thing the line of attack that that the obama campaign polled that they were most scared of and they thought could most defeat them at the polls was Barack Obama is a good man who tried his best, but he's just not up for this job. And that's not right. what the Republicans did. They went with he's the Antichrist and they lost. Right. Uh, but like, I wonder if Mitt Romney had followed that message, I think he probably could have had a better chance of winning because people don't like to believe that they vote, that they, the person they voted for is right. evil. So, right. well, right. in, 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 no, just quickly, 2012 actually was was a was a closer election than people remember. By the way, so. yeah. Well, so, and and here's the other thing. There. I, you know, my hope is that, um, and I'm saying this as a fundraiser. You know, my hope is that there is a rock and good case that comes before the Supreme Court that deal that deals with Citizens United, which is of course the dark money regime, uh, how we funnel dark money into this into campaigns and elections, because. Uh, you know, the amount of money that was spent on 2020 
to me is also criminal. That money could have been put into charity, to programs, to roads and bridges, to find, you know, developing uh, five more vaccines. It's just, to me, it just boggles my mind that, you know, people are willing to spend that kind of money on a super PAC, you know, when it could be spent in so many different ways, yeah. which also leads to the, you're the antichrist, you're horrible and vote, don't vote for that person. Cal, 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 Cal Cunningham, who is running out of the great state of, hang on, Cal, Cal Cunningham, who is running for senator from the great state of North Carolina, needed as much uh, bandwidth to send as many sexual texts to as many mistresses as possible. So he needed that money. I donated guys, money to that campaign. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Just one, one thing. One thing. Well, I'll disagree with my with, with my, um, my my dear friend Anne, uh, who we've been friends for you know thirty thirty plus years okay. now. Oh, um, I, I will. I, yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> I'm giving you a. I'm giving you a. Uh, I'm giving you a, a free shot here, Tom, to make yeah, it. I just enjoy the, the like. I'm going to disagree, oh, but we are friends. It's just my favorite thing about <laughs> the internet how, age. How, uh, how old? How old? Uh, how old? Not uh, that age. Not about your age at all. <laughs> no. But um, the, the one reason why I'll, the one reason why I'll, I'll disagree uh, with that is that uh, uh, yes, there was huge, ridiculous amounts um, of money that was poured into 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 2020. But you know what? But, but you know what? The the Citizens United so-called dark money stuff that, that was actually that was actually pretty that was actually pretty marginal. Um, a whole lot of money, a whole, the, maybe the bulk of the non-presidential money um, was actually, what actually came in from the small donors that were, were funding, that were funding Democratic candidates like Amy McGraw, like, like Cal, like, like Cal Cunningham. Him, many of whom they and um, Susan, uh, the, the um, Sarah, whatever, what's Sarah her name, Giddy. ran against them. Susan. Yeah. Sarah Gideon, uh, and they 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 ended up with um, they ended up with so much money. Sarah Gideon is a great example of this. Ended up with so much money uh, uh, in her account that uh, she she lost by million she's got left seven, seven or eight, and and it's and it's and it's still in her bank. And it's not just a matter of the fact that oh she was she was stupid and she didn't figure out how to she. Um, you can only at a right. certain point, particularly in small states like like Maine, you can only spend so you can only spend um, so much. So the, the problem right now is, I mean, um, uh, uh, Citizens United is a is a problem on is is a quote problem on the margins. If it's a problem, if it's a problem, can I ask for you, you guys to gonna be, the money is always the money is going to be the money is going to be coming in there. The Democrats have become incredibly incredibly powerful in terms of raising money um, from small um, from smaller donors. They don't have a Democrats don't have a the Democrats don't have a money problem. Democrats have a message problem. Can, can I so can I ask I like I I would I would like to hear from the the very anti citizens united people because i i want to i want to get to where you're at um my my concern with overturning citizens united is twofold the the, the first one being that the, the court case itself that determined citizens united was a group that was trying to air a documentary against hillary clinton back in uh, what 2012 right. 2008 thank you so like if, if we got rid of that like it would it would have been illegal in this this year to make a documentary about donald trump because it's a campaign year or election like there was, there, it's considered there, 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 there was a documentary on netflix about how wonderful aoc was that too would have been illegal that that worries me that we would tell documentarians that you can't make stuff if it's positive or negative about a, a, a somebody running for all you can't make pro aoc stuff because that's like, like so that, that really worries me. The other, the other thing that worries me too is that I think if you if you just cap all of that and you really slam shut campaign finance, I think you get more Donald Trumps. Because Donald Trump was was a brilliant expert at being able to get free airtime by saying crazy shit. And so I, I think you just create more of that guy. I, I, here's I don't know. the problem with Citizens United, Andrew. Uh, the the AOC documentaries, the Hillary documentary, that is so the tip of the iceberg on Citizens United. You don't have to report. You can give unlimited amounts of money. You, you, you know, groups have found ways to make things C4 versus C3 where, you know, uh, under the tax code. To me, there are so many problems with Citizens United in funneling in money that is not accounted for or that you guys will never see. I can go through the FEC reports until I'm blue in the face and I will not be able to get an accurate accounting of how much, un let, so let me be specific, unlimited money 
that was spent in this cycle. I, I'm not worried about a free speech part of Citizens United to what you're addressing, mm -hmm. because I think that the, the speech will always uh, be upheld. What I, what I am concerned with is a system that if I can only give twenty eight hundred dollars to to um, uh, you know, uh, pick a senator. I hate this guy, Marco Rubio. I don't hate anybody. I dislike him sure. intensely. I cancel the word <laughs> hate. Uh, if I can only give $2,800 to Marco Rubio in a primary and a general, um, that has to be reported. They have to do a report on it. The FEC sees it. I get no tax benefit from it. The same should hold true for Citizens United. In, in my humble opinion, you should have to report. We should know who the donors are. It doesn't matter what the group is. So, Every, so for you, it, it's more of a transparency issue than it is like capping it? It's more a transparency issue for me. But, but also, I do wonder, I, I am concerned in this Donald Trump era and that we have been working up to this Donald Trump era of what people want. And I think he has been a great example of you get what you pay for. These people paid a lot of money and did a lot of things. They got pardoned. They got, they got access. They got, they got it. And that isn't how it's supposed to work. And I know that that's very, it's very wishful of me to, to think that, but again, it, they got ambassadorships. It, it all was bought and paid for. So yes, it's transparency. It's, it's, it's a fair playing field for everybody. And, and Robert, rejoinder, I, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I could find all the money that was spent, the dark money that was spent, I, you and I would have a conversation that maybe we that we could talk about because I, I do think it's more it money on. than this small dollar stuff. <laughs> We'd live stream yeah. that conversation. Yeah, uh, would that be I, fun? Uh, I just want to make it absolutely illegal for there to be political campaigning uh, anytime, uh, like like before 30 days out from an election. <laughs> That's <laughs> my, this one, like you got a window of 30 days before an election, then you got to shut down again until the next election. Because exactly right. as Robert pointed we'll out- We'll do it a, like Britain does it, six we weeks. Have, we have a mayor's race coming in this city and it's in the primary is in June. And then the right. general's in November. This year is just going to suck in this city. It's Wait, so, oh, yeah. so can I think terrible. theoretically, uh, just if I were running for office and I had a lot of money, I yeah. wouldn't campaign at all. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't campaign, but I could donate money to hospitals and give a big speech about how much I, I care about uh, helping the, the medical system. And then I could, I could uh, say something crazy and go on Fox talking about some conspiracy theory. And mm -hmm. I, I would still be permitted to do all of those things during this time. Yes, as far as I as far as I know, because again, I see I see Trump dominating that system, and I see nerds like me and Robert George not being able to compete in that system because they wouldn't be able to raise money. No, I completely I completely agree. I mean, the reason the reason why the reason why Donald the reason why Donald Trump Trump managed to run roughshod um, among the among the Republican um, field in 2000 is to, in 2016 is um, he didn't have to he, he he spent nominally in terms of actual ads and things like things like that but he knew that he can just call up Fox and friends and they'll give him half an hour yep. 45 45 minutes which um, and, and the, any whatever crazy outrageous thing that he says then will then get be will then get picked up by CNN and MSN NBC. And back in 2016, it was because people didn't realize how horrendous he was. They were already just inviting him on. I mean, he was he was he was Joe and Mika's best friend, um, and, yeah. and, and, and got all this free and all the, got all this free advertising. Yeah, it would not be it would not surprise me if there's uh, you know if, if there is if there's another um, if, if, if anybody who can figure out how to game the system uh, to get uh, to get free advertising doesn't have to worry about. Yeah. Um, I, I think your Hillary Clintons are done. And your, your social media people are in. You, you, well, you see and, a lot and, of AOC and Trump. You wouldn't see any Hillary Clinton. Well, anymore. and Andrew also in 2016, every cable station, not just Fox, uh, uh, covered his rallies from start to finish, and nobody else got that airtime. So here's right. one more thing I'd love to see overhaul: the equal time provision at the at the FCC. That should be enforced. There should be penalties for it. If if you're going to give somebody like Donald Trump or any or Marco Rubio that kind of airtime, others should get the same. But and I will agree with that. Problem with that. Like no, Tom, I Tom, Tom, quickly, right. Tom, quickly, please. Quickly, quickly. The problem with that point, Anne, is 
the equal time provision only um, uh, is only applicable um, for broadcast networks. MSNBC, right. Fox, right. and Sorry. CNN, it doesn't apply to them. So they could still be running those rallies. But it should be a so well, there the call and include everybody. Would, would that apply to independent podcasters like me? Would I be subject to federal law for that? Well, quite, Maybe. Well, you see, if, if, um, if we were at a point now where politicians on both sides, and this, this is what scares me, when, when Republicans and Democrats start deciding that they want to start tinkering with um, uh, what uh, tech companies and tech affiliates and, and te can say or cannot, can or cannot, 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 can or cannot say, you might have these situations where we've had this wonderful explosion of, um, of, of podcasts and, and, um, and, and shows like, and shows like ours over the last, over, over the last, you know, six, six or six or eight years. Once that, once the parties in power start saying, okay, well, neither of us like the section 230 stuff that, uh, which protect Twitter and Facebook and things like that. So we'll do that. And oh, well, then, then, um, but, but what about these, these God Save America guys over on the podcast over here? So we need to start tinkering with that over there. And then, and then it, we, you start putting in regulations that cover little things, but you know, little, um, uh, little, little shows like our own as well. That's and why it, you start get. that's why you start getting really nervous when they start to start right. wanting to tinker, to, uh, tinker with these um with these kind of laws and let's Great. be honest it's as free okay. speech as i might be if you tell me an elected official might stop people from making podcasts i'd be like let's hear the man out and with that <laughs> we're gonna call it a year on electoral dysfunction thank you so much panel it's a wonderful conversation and uh uh, 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 thank you for being here. We'll go around real quickly. Ann Herberger, uh, where can folks find you next on the internet or, or follow you uh, for more um, wonderful thoughts and wisdom? Great. On Twitter at Ann W. Herberger, on uh, Instagram at surprisingly Ann W. Herberger. And I just want to tell everybody on the panel uh, what a joy to do this with you. Uh, just so great to meet so many wonderful friends. And I wish, I wish you so much love and joy in the new year and that we can all see each other in person tom robert andrew T tim marie is is, is that tim my am I, say, is I saying it right and i'm going to follow your exercise class <laughs> <laughs> that's my resolution yeah. all right to, to, to hop on that love pile, it was, it was wonderful to talking to the bush administration uh, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was it was wonderful talking <laughs> to you all you're, you're all lovely people and tom, tom i truly like i've done this a long uh, for a long time for the three years or so how long we doing you you do such a good job of bringing yeah. on really smart people like all these wonderful folks have been able to talk to and you do it in such a way that i have never i i'm a coward and I don't like uh, stepping out and, and sure. uh, uh, locking antlers with people. And I always feel very comfortable here being able to air my opinion and talk to people in good faith. And you're so good at being able to set that and let everybody yeah. know that we're all friends. We're all trying to solve problems here. And thank you for doing that. Yeah. Heaton, uh, as you did in the beginning, you jumped the line. So go ahead. <laughs> <Andrew Heaton. laughs> Where can folks find you and follow more of your work in the, in the uh, year to come? <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, guys, you can check out my podcast. It's called The Political Orphanage. It is designed for people that don't like partisanship and like problem solving and get along with people that disagree with. Uh, uh, Tim Marie has been on it because every Friday I do a uh, a comedy show. So there's there's uh, interviews with authors on Wednesdays. There's comedy shows on Fridays. Tom has been on it in the past. I will very likely bring on Ann and Robert at some point <laughs> in the future. And uh, and so I invite anybody that's just kind of like, if, if, you're, if you're burned out on Red Team versus Blue Team and you like what you were hearing, please go to the Political Orphanage. Awesome. Thank you. Timory, uh, where can folks follow you and, and, and what's coming next for you? Um, probably the easiest place, like a clearinghouse, would be sexwithtimory.com. So that's T I M A R E E, and sex is spelled like sex. Um, and there you can find out more of my events and you can see the articles that I've been writing. I write for Philly Weekly. The thing that I would like to draw everyone's attention to now, while I have the opportunity, is that SISEA is a new. A uh, bill that is up, it is proposed. It's another one of those like anti-trafficking bills that's actually going to be incredibly bad for people who make sexy content online. And so I would love it if people would look into SISEA and then contact your rep and say, no, bad. And then don't do it. And then repeal FOSTA SESTA also. Uh, but yeah, you can find out more about that kind of stuff, sexwithtimarie.com. Or if you want to work out with me, sweatwithtimarie.com, which is spelled... <laughs> Like sweat. <laughs>
Thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, always good to see you. And Robert George, where can the where can the kids find you? Well, uh, well, I, first of all, um, I, I, as we did at the top, I'm also going to um, put um, uh, throw major hosannas uh, in the in the direction of um, my part, my longtime partner in crime, uh, Tom Brennan, for allowing this. Um, wonderful forum um, to exist and allow these these great conversations to uh, to happen um, to happen every week. Um, I will also give the um, uh, being the crusty old guy on the panel. Yeah. I will also I will also uh, share one last caveat that as we say goodbye to 2020, uh, we should really keep in mind that um, uh, 2020 isn't over until 20 which means 2020 is not really over until January 20, um, because there's gonna be a number of bumpy 2020-esque things that's gonna happen until, um, the, until the inauguration. And unfortunately, Donald Trump is gonna um, um, insist upon that. And so we're just gonna be going along, along for the ride. Um, yep. You can find me on, on Twitter, uh, at, Rob, at Rob George. Um, uh, come for the puns, stay for the analysis, Come for the analysis, stay for the puns. Uh, either way, I, um, I'm also, as uh, Tom, Tom said, uh, on the editorial board of Bloomberg Opinion, and so I columnize from um, from that platform. And so you can go to at at um, B Opinion uh, to see some of uh, some of my work there as well as that of my colleagues as well so um happy new year to um uh, to everyone and um you know see you next year i'm also i'm gonna go a step further than january 20th like at a at a minimum i'm just imagining what the first three weeks of the biden administration in that building is going to be yes <laughs> like yeah. gonna be like literal turds inside desk drawers like right. At yeah. a certain point, whoopee uh, cushions, yeah, yeah, snakes. Yep, <laughs> actual snakes, not the, not the. Yeah, <laughs> no snakes. Uh, my name is Tom Brennan. Thank you very much, panel. Uh, you can all find me at Brennanator on Twitter, at Brennanator Graham on Instagram, and uh, I just want to reiterate, you know, everyone said such kind words about me. Uh, in, in 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 turn, I'll say everyone who's done this show, uh, like everyone who's been a panelist this year, but particularly this group, have been people who I think, uh, you know saw the challenge of 2020 and and rose to meet it and you know i think uh, a lot of what we do we learned this year that you know obviously essential workers means a different things in the height of an emergency but you know the work everyone on this panel does uh is essential as well and you all found ways to keep doing it and that's really really impressive and something i strive to to emulate uh, so keep up the good work. And uh, <laughs> on that note, I also want to say a quick thank you to Rich Templeton, aka Dr. Brody, Cody Brody, for stopping by <laughs> earlier, uh, as well as the depressed chef himself, James Heskey, and Amanda Castro for popping by early on. Thank you, as always, to Declan Chalvey and Jordi Belair for designing the electoral dysfunction eagle art. Thank you very much to Joanne Harris for composing our theme music and Kevin Scott for creating our show animation and our old pal Ned Thorne for helping me put these together every single week. Now to play us out for a little last bit of holiday cheer, we're gonna kick it over to Queens for our old pals, the David Wade Experience. Ned Thorne star, wipe us to Queens. Merry Christmas.
was a mess. 